Hello, my name is William. I'm part of the product marketing team here at GitLab. And this is a video to talk a little bit about some of the project management capabilities of GitLab. In particular, I want to talk about issues, epics, milestones, and roadmaps. Along the way, we might touch on some other project management capabilities or concepts, but this should give you a basic overview so that you can use some of the features of GitLab and kind of understand what they do and how they fit together. So to show you how this works, I'll show you a few of the issues that I'm working on and how I'm using these kind of concepts together. So the first part of GitLab to understand is the issue. Think of an issue as a task to be accomplished. If you have a to-do, something that you need to go do, you should go create an issue to go do that. And that issue is going to let you track that to-do. Uh, this is an example of an issue. You can have a description that talks about what you need to do. In this case, I am going to kick off the market requirements for GitOps, but you could have any kind of issue you're kicking off. And I can add a few to-dos here, um, just little check boxes, but mostly an issue is gonna be where I can make comments and collaborate with other people. And an issue is the unit of work, something to go and do. Now, this issue is part of an epic. Uh, you can see that there are some, some parts of the issue here. It's part of an epic. This issue belongs to a milestone. Uh, this issue can have a due date, and it has some labels. Uh, I won't cover all of this concepts, but just note that an issue is a pretty rich object. You can link it to other issues. So it could have, uh, I need to do this one first, and then that one. An issue can be blocked by another issue. Uh, or it can just have a related issue or related merge requests upvotes and downvotes. There's a lot of things here, but mostly just think of have something to do, log it in an issue. And that issue belongs to an epic. And you can think of the epic as a, a larger project or larger set of issues. So if you have multiple things you need to do, and those get bucketed up into like a, a larger deliverable, then that's what you use the epic for. So an epic is a bucket of issues. Uh, I can think of these as like a project. Unfortunately, in GitLab, we have something else that's already called a project. You know, you can have a, a GitLab project is the entire repository. So there's a marketing project and there's a product marketing project. There's a website project. Um, so unfortunately, that's called a project. But in this case, the epic, epic is the bucket of issues. Is, so in this case, for this epic, I want to define some market requirements. And it has three issues that are part of this epic. Now, the, the difference between the issue and the epic is first, you can see the issue has a bunch, of, a bunch of rich elements that you can interact. It's designed for like your unit of work. The epic is a lot simpler. There's not as much stuff over here because an epic is designed to be a bucket of work rather than just one unit. In that sense, it has the elements that are bucketed into it and it has uh, the time frame in which we expect this project or this epic to get done. Uh, I keep saying project informally, but this, this epic, this uh, set of deliverables. Um, so the way to think about an epic is when all of these issues are closed, then the epic is done, right? So an epic is not something that you want to keep open for a long time and you keep adding issues to. An epic is, you, is something like, here's something we need to go accomplish. In order to accomplish this, it's going to be set into a, a bucket of things, and each, each of those individual things to go get done are issues. And when you get all of those issues done and those issues are closed, then the epic is, is over, right? That's the way to think about it. Uh, now, the time frame for when this issue starts, or sorry, when this epic starts and when this epic ends, that's determined by the milestones that are part of the issues that make up the epic. So you assign issues to a milestone and these dates will automatically be generated. The epic, because it's a big bucket of a lot of things to get done, will look at the dates for the individual tasks that comprise that epic. And it's just gonna grow or shrink automatically depending on the milestones there. So let's, let's actually take a look at what a milestone is. So in this case, I have my kickoff, epic, uh, kickoff issue, and it's part of this milestone called uh, Bangalore, SM Strategic Marketing Bangalore. 
we name each of our milestones after different cities around the world. Uh, so in this case, the milestone is also, it looks like a bucket of work to get done, right? Like these are all these issues that are open in the milestone and closed in the milestone. And the difference between the epic and the, and the milestone is the epic is the larger project or deliverable that you want to get done. And the milestone is a chunk of time. So uh, there's a way to think about this and a way to not think about this. The way to not think about this is a milestone is a deliverable, right? So you might think when I ship the web page for this project, uh, when, I've, when I've got a web page live, I've completed a milestone. And certainly that is uh, an important milestone in the project, but that's not how this milestone should be used because that, uh, that web page, even though it comprises a lot of things that need to happen to get that web page live, that might, you know, that might get done next week or it might get done next month. That, that, those due dates can change. Instead, think of a milestone as a unit of time like January or February or March. Usually when you set the start date and the due date for a milestone, then you don't change that. Uh, in the concept of if you're familiar with agile project management and, and agile software development, this is often called a sprint. And usually this can be a one week period, a two week period, or a month long period. Uh, but it's a, it's a discrete period of time. That's what a milestone is. So for us, we use two week milestones. And the Bangalore milestone is everything that we're going to work on between June 15th and June 28th. So you set up a milestone, you say this chunk of time in this two weeks, and then you ask yourself, what am I going to get done in that two weeks? What do I think I can accomplish? And that's how these issues get added to this milestone. So the reason this issue here, this kickoff market requirements issue, is part of the get up GitOps market requirements epic is because the, this epic is the larger thing I need to get done. The larger deliverable is to create the market requirements. One of the things I need to do is, is do a kickoff. And the time frame in which I want to do the kickoff is this two week period right now. And that's why it's part of this milestone. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. A few other things to, to dive into here is that an epic can be part of other epics. It can have ancestors and it can have uh, children. Uh, you can think of it that way. Uh, so the idea here is the market requirements epic, it's actually part of a bigger epic called the resource page. So I have a bigger deliverable, which is the resource page. And in order for me to deliver this page, I need to do uh, a market overview, I need to have a market requirement, a solution overview, all of these things. And each of these things comprise of their own set of issues that need to get done in order to complete that deliverable. So this is the topical structure of, of the things I'm working on, the epics and the issues. And then the time frame in which these things might happen are the milestones and due dates. So for example, this one is in the Bangalore. That's this week I'm getting it done. This, I'm not gonna get done until next week, and so I've added it to my Cape Town, which is our next milestone, or our next uh, sprint, our next milestone. That's the next two weeks. And this one I just have on the backlog, that's like means it's not assigned, it, it doesn't have a particular time frame yet. Uh, so if you look at all of the issues, uh, sorry, so all of these epics, so this epic, the resource page has a bunch of sub epics like the market requirements and that market requirements has a bunch of issues. And so you can see the reason why it starts on June 15th and ends on July 10th is because the last milestone that are, is, uh, an issue is assigned to in this epic is that Cape Town milestone and it's July 10th. That's where that date comes from. The other view that you'll get into this, uh, get from this is called a roadmap. So, the roadmap view takes all of our epics uh, and our milestones. So here are my milestones and here are my epics and it lays them out on a calendar. So here's my Bangalore milestone I've been telling you about. So this is this two week period of time. 
I set those two weeks and I say, what am I going to get done in that milestone? Here's the Cape Town one. So what am I going to get done in that milestone? And here's the next one. We haven't named it yet. Maybe we'll call it uh, Denver or some other city that starts with a D. But this is, these are the discrete units of time. Ask, what am I going to get done in those? And then if we look at this epic, so here's this top level go to market epic. And within that, I have a GitOps epic, which is the whole go to market for all of GitOps. Within that, I have this deliverable a resource page. Within that epic, I have all of these other epics. So you can see you can nest these pretty deep. And here's this market requirements epic that I've been showing you. And inside of that market requirements epic, I have those few deliverables. And that's how this time frame gets determined. Because between here and here are the issues that are part of these two milestones. So hopefully that gives you an understanding of how milestones relate to epics. And on this roadmap view, you can see how long is it gonna take me to complete a particular epic. For example, you know, this one should be done within this time. And the epics, they may expand or they may contract. So, you know, for example, this market requirements epic, if I add more stuff to it, it might take longer to get done. Uh, so this might expand or contract or move around depending on how good I am at delivering my things on time. But these milestones up here, these aren't going to change. I set these and they're for a particular period of time. For example, what's happening in Q1 or what's happening this week. Now, uh, today in GitLab, when I'm recording this video, we don't have the ability to add multiple milestones. So unfortunately, today you have to choose. You can either have something the next two weeks in the Cape Town, or it can be in Q1, but I can't have them in both. In an ideal world, I could be able to, to have two, and that's a future feature that's coming in GitLab. But today, I, I just use these you know, two week long, or maybe sometimes a month long milestones. Uh, the last thing I will touch on is just briefly this concept of labels. This is for another video, but Labels are a way to categorize your work. So uh, I might have a project and I might have, you know, this project I'm working on is a market requirements and I have these things that I need to get done and they're getting done in this period of time. Um, but I might want to categorize them. So for example, by priority, for example, this one is a top priority this is what I'm working on right now. So I've called it a P1. Um, and I might want to look at what are all, all of the, the issues that are currently top priority. And so this is, what this label does is it lets you categorize and tag your issues. Um, so if you have something and it's the concept of a, of a big bucket, a big deliverable or big thing you want to get done, you should use an Epic for that. You probably don't need a label for it as well. You might want to categorize all those things together, but put them into an Epic. Uh, you might have, you're saying, what are we doing in the next month? That's a milestone. Put that in the milestone. And then you can use labels for other, other concepts. So hopefully that helps you out. Uh, there are a lot of folks at GitLab. You can um, ping you know, other folks in marketing and there's, there's lots of folks that can help you out with that. If you are, are using GitLab and um, you know, you're a GitLab team member and you need some help kind of using this structure that we outlined, but this is a video to give you a quick overview of how we use it here and hopefully that helps you out. Cheers.